All right, here we go. My name is Jeff Cade. You're listening to episode 332 of the world famous West Virginia Surf Report podcast. Hello, world. Sheets, which is a big, uh, you know, chain, convenience store chain around the, in these parts here. Up in the upper right-hand corner of Pennsylvania and beyond. They're having some kind of a deal today, which is the 4th of July as I record this. And their gas is a dollar seventy-seven six seventeen seventy-six a dollar seventy one dollar seventy-seven six cents a gallon and um last night i got uh tony and i both got notifications on our phone you know starting at midnight all day on the fourth of july until promotional supplies are are exhausted you know like i don't know what that is what is there like x number of gallons i don't know anyway so it's gonna be this 1776 i thought that's pretty cool yeah by the time I get out and get my big swaddling ass out of bed, that promotional threshold will have been crossed hours ago. So, um, you know, Tony and I talked about it a little bit. And she got up this morning. She gets up, you know, before the sun. The sun the sun sleeps in longer than she does. And she, so she was up early. And she, she went over there. And she started. She topped every one of our cars off. All four of us. <laughs> she cut. She topped all four cars off at a dollar seventy. What is that? Like a dollar seventy-eight? I guess. I don't know what that seventeen seventy-six is. But anyway, dollar seventy-eight a gallon. Pretty good deal. So the downside is n- none of us really needed much gas. She said she spent less than forty dollars on all four cars. So anyway, that's you know. And it was causing pandemonium. I mean, there were, I went out a little while ago, and went over to uh, Dixon City to get to get a a twelve pack of the uh, Bell's Two Hearted Ale. You with me? <laughs> and um, passed by two sheets on my way over there. There's cars stretched all the way down the road. It's it, this is late in the day. I mean, it's like right now it's ten to five. So that that threshold is you know pretty high. I thought they'd be out of gas. Or whatever the whatever amount of gas that they said they were going to sell by I don't know nine o'clock in the morning or something like that. That's what I assumed, but apparently it's still going on. People buying that shit hand over fist. I saw something on the internet where this guy had a tote in the back of his SUV, and he was just pumping gas straight into it, straight into a tote. I mean, is that like the most dangerous thing? If there's like the smallest static electricity, things go to, there's just going to be a mushroom cloud, you know? And how are you going to get that into your car if it's in a if it's in a large plastic tote? How are you going to get that to your car, into your car tank? And he's just standing there just like pumping it straight into a tote. He's got the back lifted up on his SUV, and the tote's sitting in there. It's a big tote. Just pumping it straight in there. People are out of their minds. People are ridiculous. But anyway, we topped off all our cars. Or Tony did. I had nothing to do with it. By the time I got up, it was all done. It had already been topped. Everything had been topped. I talked to my dad briefly, and he goes, Yeah, we did it too. I said, I thought you guys didn't have a card. Because they, they hold grudges, you know. They have some kind of grudge against sheets. I can't keep track of it all. can't keep track of their many grievances. They held like a 20-year grudge against Best Buy about something that happened. They're still holding a KFC. Well, when this happened, when the original offense happened, I think it was 1960-something. I'm not even kidding. I think it it was from the 60s. And they're still, they they will not eat anything from Kentucky Fried Chicken a.k.a. Kentucky Fried Chicken, a.k.a. KFC. 
because of some some kind of a mishap from you know back when back during Nixon's first administration <laughs> during the first Nixon administration something went wrong and they're they're dug in dug the, their their heels are dug in in fact my mother goes so far as to uh, extend that to other chicken restaurants she won't go to Chick-fil-A has nothing to do with that KFC thing. She goes, well, it's too close. It's adjacent. You know, it's KFC adjacent. I'm like, ah, I don't think that's fair. Just because they sell chicken? It's like everything chicken related is now. So anyway, they had some kind of grievance against sheets. But I guess when you get that 1776 gas, mister, uh, all bets are off. <laughs> I, did, I knew I knew they had, I guess, you know. Everybody has a price, they say. Well, I found out what the price is for my parents, seventeen seventy six. All right. Anyway, we're all topped off. Can't, it's created like pandemonium. Car, there's probably been fist fights. There's probably been car crashes. There might be fires. I don't know. Explosions, probably. I don't know. I don't know if it's a good idea selling this selling this gas at this price. I don't know. But anyway, um, did you did you take advantage of that deal too? I don't know. I mean, I drove over to drove over to Wegmans and drove back, which is maybe like fourteen miles total round trip. Maybe I should go back up there and top off again <laughs> before because I drove fourteen miles. I mean, you know, it might I might have used like a quarter of a tank or something. I don't know. Anyway, or, or a quarter of a gallon, I should say. Um, all right, so enough of that. Um, the WVSR, which is my main website, the, the West Virginia Surfport, the original home, the hub of the entire Surf Report universe, which is not a very big universe, but it's my universe. I, I spent the whole weekend, I had four days off, I spent three of those days messing around with that website, monkeying around with it, and trying to reconfigure it, configure it, God, and I, um, I, I, I'm, I use some s- different themes. Some of them, I actually paid money for one of them. Didn't like them. I liked the one that I was using. So I went back to that, but I, but I, I messed around with it, changed it around a little bit. And I'm going to start, I think I'm going to consolidate everything into that website. So everything uh, Surf Report related, including the podcast, I think I'm going to start posting at that website, the WVSR.com, which is the original home of all, everything, all this, all this emanates from the WVSR.com. I put two new posts up there, so if you want to check them out, I'm going to try to put something up there every day. But the first one I put up there was about uh, a confusing turn of events. This happened back in Myrtle Beach, Right. There was a confusing turn of events. Uh, I was perplexed and confused by the whole thing. So I did what everybody does nowadays, and I, 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 I turned to artificial intelligence. I logged into chat GPT and, and asked it to, to help, me, help solve this mystery, and you can see the results there. That's the first one. And then the second one, my friend Tim, back in Dunbar, he, he he provided me all kinds of data about he he, he watched every episode of Canon <laughs> you know Canon the TV show from the 70s uh morbidly obese private detective you, you know what i'm saying big mustache he 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 kept track of the number of times he shot his gun you know how many times he was hit by bullets how many people how many times people shot at him uh, times he was knocked unconscious, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He even got set on fire, you know, a, a time or two. So he, 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 he put together a spreadsheet across all five seasons. I think it was like, I looked it up, it was like 122 episodes across five seasons. And he's got all the data in a beautiful spreadsheet format in, a, in Excel. And I... You know, and I, I I posted that, and I wrote some analysis, my personal analysis on all this. So that's up there too. So that that was up there. I posted that yesterday, and um, so check it out if you want to. And I just want to let you know, I'm going to start posting all those the the surf report stuff there too. I mean, the podcast stuff there too, because that's you know that's where all I still get that website still gets a lot of traffic, and I don't even post anything there. 
You know, I, I got I, I got something on my hands here that I don't need to turn my back on. You know what I'm saying? I need to utilize that. So anyway, you can check it out if you want to. If you don't, uh, you know, it's understandable. Um, quickly, I want to tell you about the two trips I took over the, over the last weekend. Uh, it was a big weekend for me. I, I did two cool as hell things, and it was a uh, it was extremely tiring. And it took. I mean, I'm an old man now, and all this stuff just takes its toll on me. Okay, the first one is on Saturday. Me and both boys went down to uh, the Keswick Theater, which is outside of Philadelphia. You know, to see the Eels, which is a band from uh, L.A. And I love them. I've seen them. This is my tenth time. I did the analysis, and I'm. I know for a fact that it's my tenth time. And uh, the first time I saw them was in Los Angeles, on their first, after their first album came out, when they were still a trio. So I saw them at the Roxy in Los Angeles, and I saw them nine times in Philadelphia or around Philadelphia. So. You know, and the boys went with me. They love them, too. They grew up listening to them. I mean, they know their music inside out, you know. And um, so I went down there and met Steve, my friend Steve down there, and uh, it was so freaking hot. I mean, it's just so humid. And um, there was, like, no parking. I didn't know what to do. There's, like, it's like this quaint little town. It looks like a little town that's out of, like, some kind of Norman Rockwell painting or something. It's a nice little cool little place, and uh, it's got this old theater in the middle of it. I mean, I think that thing's been there forever. They have shows in there, and um, it, it's a cool place. I, I love it. I've been to shows there before, and um, so we got into a semi argument. Me and me and the boys about where to park. They're just like, all they want to do is just just park. It doesn't matter. Yes, it does matter. It matters a great deal. <laughs> I don't want to walk five miles to the car when we're getting when we're done in this in this giant humid mess, this soup, this stew of of haze and sweat and stickiness. I don't want to do that. Plus, I don't want to park somewhere and we'll get towed. It's fine, God, you know. So we got into it. We had words. And it's not the first time. There's always there's always some kind of problem when it comes to the parking. You know, they think I'm just a nut because I'm particular. I'm, and I, but I, you know, I want to find a place that makes sense, right? And they don't give a shit. They park on somebody's lawn. You know, they don't care. Just park. So anyway, we got we got into it. So we walked. We were kind of far away, farther than I wanted to be. But we walked down. Met Steve down in front of the theater. There is this place across the street. I can't remember what it's called. It doesn't matter. It's a, it's something tavern, I think. I think it had the word tavern in the title. It's like on a corner, and both sides are like you roll up like almost like garage doors, so it's open air almost. So on both on two sides because you know it's on a corner, so two sides of it face the the streets. You know, there's nobody in there. I mean, there's like maybe like one fourth full, possibly somewhere in that neighborhood. You know, I mean, the, the show was like, we're there early. The doors didn't even open till 7. And this is like at 6 o'clock, maybe even before. Maybe it was like quarter till 6. So we walk in there. So that's, that's where we ate last time. So we're just going to do it again. So we went in there, and the guy goes, do you have uh, reservations? Just real snotty to us. Just right out, just right out of the gate, just snotty to us. And, um, and we're like, No. And um, he goes, well, it's going to be a while. I'm looking around. There's nobody in there. There's, like, empty tables everywhere. <laughs> I was like, uh. So we're, we're standing there. Like, this is, like, throwing us off. Like, how? why is this going to take long to be seated when there's, like, 20 open tables, you know, right in front of us? And, um, and, he, and then the guy, while we're talking, while we're discussing on what to do and, you know, trying to make sense of this thing, the guy goes, Gentlemen, can you wait outside on the sidewalk? You're you're blocking the entrance. There's like nobody there. There's nobody trying to get in. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, what in the hell? I said, what in the hell? I said, we'll just go somewhere else. And the guy just shrugs his shoulder. You know, I said, we'll just keep walking. I said, we'll we'll go out on the sidewalk and we'll keep walking. The guy just shrugs his shoulders. I don't give a shit. You know. I mean, the guy was an asshole. I mean, why? Why would you? Have, if you're running a business. Why do you have to be a dick? You know, why? 
I don't understand. I don't understand why. I don't understand this approach. I'm sure he doesn't care. He gets paid whatever he gets paid, whether we have dinner there or not. He couldn't give two shits, you know. Clearly, oh god, that irritated me. You know, I was I was shouting things, and um, so we walked down the street, and um, the boys are like, "God, here we go. Everything's a problem," you know. And we go to we find this place called Bullseye Burger, Bullseye Burgers, or something like that. I said, let me look this shit up on my phone before we go in here. Because it looked like, I don't know, it's like a little hole in the wall. And the place got raves, rave reviews. I said, all right, let's go in here. It was hot. No air conditioning. They had no air conditioning in there. They had a big, giant grill going, you know. And um, it was just like sweat. I was just sweating. I mean, all of us were just sitting there sweating. But the burgers were kick-ass, and, and the fries were great, you know. They just give you like a two-liter of, of soda. You order soda, they just give you a two-liter and four cups, you know. And um, the prices weren't too bad. I mean, it's cheaper than five guys. And it was good. I mean, really good. And they were nice. They were friendly, you know, in stark contrast to that dick down on the corner, you know. It was fantastic. Great. I mean, I, I'm, I'm so happy that that guy was an asshole to us. Because I guarantee the food was better. The people were nicer. And, uh, you know, probably even cheaper. You know? And it was, I mean, that other place was open air, so it was hot too. So, the bullet dodged. You know? And, and I was sitting in there just like bitching at some point. I was like, oh my God, it's so freaking hot in here. Ever heard of air conditioning? What is this, Europe? And the, and the 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 boys are going. God, here we go. Why? Why always the complaints all the time? And you know, like I said, sorry if I'm you know if I'm irritating you guys. And then I take a napkin and stick it to my forehead because <laughs> there's sweat. I just like stick a napkin. And it just sticks to my forehead. And they're like, oh, okay. You apologize, and then and then you're sticking napkins to your face. I said, I'm just illustrating the point that it's hot. And it sucks. Food was good though. The show itself, fantastic. I mean, you can't go wrong. I mean, the, the eels are so fun. They rock. Their songs are great. the The lead singer E, Mark Everett, is his name, known professionally as E. <laughs> Just the letter E. He he's hilarious. I mean, he, between the songs, he talks. He's funny. the The band is is. Smoking hot rock, you know, just and it's loud and fun and rocking. Great songs, and yeah, it's, it's just highly entertaining. They played for about two hours. They played twenty six or twenty seven songs. So much fun. The leads the, or the opening act was a uh, was this guy uh, Austin Antoine was his name, and he was a rapper. He he. he, he yeah, he came out there with a laptop. He just pushes a button and a beat starts <laughs> going. You know, he starts rapping these songs. And I'm like, what in the... You know? And then um, he starts talking to the audience, asking the audience questions. And then whatever answers he gets, he incorporates them. He, like, creates a new... You know? So he's t- talking to the audience, creating new new songs as he goes. That was good. The guy's talented, you know? And um, he was kind of funny, you know? And... um. I don't know. It was, it was weird though. It was sort of like a, like a, you know, like music, like a, a regular rock concert, or like a, a, a music concert, music show, slash performance art, slash stand up comedy. It was, it was hard to figure out what he was going for, but it was fun. It was enjoyable. We had, we had a good time. They always have a, unusual opening acts. They, at one time, they, the Eels had a ventriloquist. Um, they had a ventriloquist open. They also had a Puddles Pity Party. I don't know if you're familiar with him. It's like a seven foot clown with the with the voice of an angel, or something like that. I don't know how he, something along those lines. I think that's what how, the way he, he calls himself. It's like he's like a he's almost seven feet tall, and he has like an operatic voice. And um, you know, he had him open up for him one time. That was memorable. You know, it's always you never know what you're gonna get. He had they had a guy that had this big, uh, like he was like a one man band. He had this big 
instrument that he created himself made out of like pipes and tubes and stuff. <laughs> and um, that was pretty crazy. Yeah, you never know what you're going to get with these guys. It was it was a blast. I give it an A plus. You know, when we were driving home, um, we were talking. You know, I've seen him ten times. Steve's seen him sixteen times. I think it's the fourth time for both boys. We we're talking about, and all of us said that it was either the best one, or definitely one of the best shows that we've ever seen by them. It was so fun. You know, if you're not into the Eels, you should give them a chance. You should listen to them. They have a lot of albums. They've been recording consistently since like the late nineties. So. Anyway, that was fun. And then the baseball game down to Baltimore. Baltimore Orioles is on Monday. Baltimore Orioles versus Cincinnati Reds. Um, Never been to uh, Camden Yards in Baltimore before. Um, Waiting for the Reds to play there. uh, They play in different leagues, so they don't play there very often. And finally, this year they did. So uh, Steve and I, you know, we uh, made, made arrangements. Steve brought some friends. He brought a friend. And the friend's father-in-law, I think. So there's four of us that went. And it was quite an adventure. (sighs) Quite an adventure. The game was supposed to start at 7. So we left Steve's house at 1. I drove down there. I met him, met him up, met up with those guys at 1 o'clock. Steve drove. We were going to get down there enough with enough time to walk around Inner Harbor, which is a touristy place down there. And then have dinner somewhere, and then go to the ballpark and watch the game. And um, so that was the plan. So we went. We started driving. And oh, by the way, there's all kinds of concern about the weather. You know, all day, all week, we kept reading the weather. It said there's going to be thunderstorms. There's going to be, you know, there might be tornadoes. That's what they said. Tornadoes in the area. You know, so they didn't know if this game was going to get played at all. Uh, you know, and it's. Again, super hot, super humid. So we we drove down there, and we got stuck in a gigantic traffic jam. There was a uh, a wreck, like a catastrophic wreck. (laughs) And they had the entire, whatever direction we were driving, I don't know what direction we were driving, but whatever direction we were driving, all lanes were closed. Probably because there was some kind of like, somebody got killed in this thing. I don't know. I'm not sure. but So it took two hours extra. Ever how long it takes, I think it's supposed to take two hours from Steve's house. It takes me about an hour to get to Steve's house. So, you know, and then add two hours to it because we're just sitting still on the interstate, sun beaming down. I mean, he's running the air conditioner, but it's hot, you know. And um, so we got there late. We couldn't go really around the inner harbor. I'd never been there before, you know. I just, you know, I wanted to check it out. You know, we we did a quick we walked around real fast, you know, and then headed over to the ballpark. And, the, you know, at that point, it was sunny. It looked perfect. I was like, this is, you know, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think there's going to be any problem, you know. And um, we got in there. We had some Boog's, Boog's Barbecue, Boog Pal, you know, former uh, Oriole great Boog Pal. He has a barbecue stand in there. It's famous. We have We had that for dinner. Fantastic! I went with the beef. You can have, you can have pork, beef, turkey. It's all smoked. Smells great. I mean, you can smell it before you even get close to it. It is excellent. So we had that. You know, we're we're standing there, and uh, the sun's beaming down. It's uh, I was like, well, this. There's not going to be a storm. It's not going to storm. Next thing you know pandemonium again <laughs> you know armageddon it's just pouring so the game the game started late and you know our our seats are wet you know every I mean, we we so we you know we had to go down there we had to, we had to tip the guy five dollars every time he wipes our seats off <laughs> you know so we, we go down there we, we sit down it starts pouring down the rain we have to go back you know, you have to find shelter, and then, then it stops. They start playing again. We have to go back, pay the guy five dollars, uh, you know, to wipe our seats off, and then uh, it, just keep doing that over and over again. And then there's this big giant rain delay in the middle of the thing, and um, we got, I think it was like an hour and forty minutes, you know, and it's just 
pouring. I mean, just a monsoon, you know, and it just won't stop. And we're we're outside this shop where they sell beer. Um, it was a tiny little, I think it was called Boog's General Store. It was right across from, from Boog's Barbecue. And there's this woman running the thing. She goes, you can't stand in my doorway. Get out of my doorway. It was pouring, you know. And there's just like this small little overhang. And it's hot. It's raining. It's hot, you know. And, um, and it, was, it wasn't fun. I mean, I don't know. I'm glad I got to see the stadium. The stadium was great, you know. But it kept raining over and over again. The Reds got beat. They got they got their ass handed to them. They were making their pitcher pitch in the pouring rain. I mean, he was bitching about that for a week later. Like I heard about yesterday, I was watching the game. The guy's still complaining about it. He, you know, they, he was out there. I mean, it was like pouring. He said, I couldn't even open my eyes. I was pitching with my eyes closed, you know. And, and he, they were out there pitching. The guys were like smashing balls off the wall and stuff. Yeah, you know. And the Reds got their ass handed to them, and, it, and we kept getting ran out of our seats, you know, over and over and over again. And um, and it was hot. <sighs> I mean, other than that, it was kind of fun. But uh, you know, I'm glad I got to see the stadium. To say that it was, uh, I mean, it was fun. I mean, I don't, I don't want to, uh, you know, I mean, you know, everybody. We were we were making the best of it. We were laughing and you know joking around and stuff. We had fun, but it would have been better if a it hadn't rained and b we didn't get stuck in that traffic jam, set on the highway for hours and hours and hours. And then on the way back, it felt like I don't know. My contacts were burning. You know, I don't know. My contacts were burning. And it felt like it took 20 hours to get home. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it was just, it's like I, I just wanted it to be over, you know. I mean, it, it we were, you know, I didn't get home till 4.45 a.m. 4.45. The sun was, the, the birds were chirping. Tony was getting up for the day. When I came in, Tony was making coffee, <laughs> you know. She was, getting, she was getting ready for work, you know, prepping for work, you know. And I'm just coming in. My eyes felt like, you know, they were damaged, like traumatized, you know. And, um, oh, God. I mean, it, we just drove and drove and drove and drove. Felt like it was never going to end. <laughs> but, um, you know, we had some, we had some, uh, you know, we had some obstacles to get past, but, it was, I would not say it was a disaster. It just wasn't. It could have been better. Let's just put it that way. The rain sucked, and the, and the, and the traffic sucked, and that ride back sucked. But I got to watch baseball, and I got to sit in Camden Yards, and I got to, you know, spend time with Steve, and I had a couple beers, which were, you know, like $15 each. But, you know, you know it was nice when it wasn't raining. <laughs> And the Boog's Barbecue was kicking. I mean, I can't say enough good stuff about that. I'd go back for sure. It was a nice ballpark. Beautiful. Beautiful ballpark. Glad I got to go. That was another one knocked off. You know, I got. I haven't been to too many of the, of the, of the, of the ballparks anymore because the ones I went to back in my previous baseball life, uh, they're all gone. They're all knocked down. They don't even exist anymore. So I'm going to have to start going to the same cities over and over again. Like Pittsburgh, for instance. I went to Three River Stadium a few times, but that's not there anymore. That's gone. And Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, I have gone to the Cincinnati. Like, But, you know, there's like I went to uh, Candlestick Park, gone. It's not there anymore. You know, stuff like that. You know, and um, so in, down in uh, Atlanta, Fulton County Stadium, I went there many times. Gone. I mean, shit. They they're on their second stadium since then. You know, I never even went to the the next one, the the one from the Olympics, Turner Field or whatever. I never even went to that one. Now they're on another one. It's crazy. So anyway, but um, I I I did get another one knocked off. So the so right now, there's a there's one that's controversial. I asked Zip about this. I ask his opinion on this. But I've been to. Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati. I've been to the one in Philly. I can't remember what it's called. I don't know who sponsors it. I've been to uh, I've been to Camden Yards. Where else? I've been to Dodger Stadium. Uh, is there others? Feels like there's another one. Am I missing one? Philly. 
I don't know. But I have, I've also been to Fenway, Fenway Park. But I was like, I don't know, 14 years old. Can I count that one? I think that one's controversial. I don't know about that. I don't, I don't know if I can count Fenway because that was uh, when I was a kid. I feel like I should cut it off as adults only. <laughs> the ones I went to as an adult. I don't know. Zip seemed to disagree. So if you've been there, you've been there. I'm like, I don't know about that. And I don't know. It's like, I don't know if I can count that. What, what do you think about it? Anyway, I have been to Fenway Park. But um, anyway, uh, speaking of different parks, Tony and I bought uh, tickets for a Reds-Pirates game in August. It's a Saturday. Bought those today. Got a hotel room uh, right beside the ballpark. It's like 0.2 miles away. And uh, we're going to do that. We're going to go in August, middle August, I think, somewhere in that neighborhood. So that'll be another ballpark off. So I'm going to start powering through these. There, I got quite a few ballparks that are within driving distance here. Oh, I've been to Yankee Stadium too. Forgot about that. But it's not again. It's not the same one. It's not the it's not the one that they're playing in now. I don't know. I don't know. Some of the lines are blurred on this stuff. Can I count that? I don't think so. That's not the same ballpark. It's it's a different ballpark, even though it has the same name. So I have both New York teams within driving distance. I got uh, Washington within driving distance. I got Pittsburgh. That's kind of far, but that's where we're going to do that one soon. Uh, I got, I even have Toronto. That's not that far. Boston isn't that far. Baltimore, got them. You know, so up here in the, um, while we live here, I should knock out all those. I need to knock out every one of those. You know, both New York teams, Boston Toronto, uh, let's see, what else? I don't know. I think that's it. Because we're going to have Pittsburgh knocked out, and we're going to have uh, Baltimore knocked out, and Philly is knocked out. So, anyway, bought those tickets today. That'll be fun. That'll be exciting. Both teams are pretty good. The Reds and the Pirates are pretty good. So, anyway. All right, I think we're at the end of this thing. hope you enjoyed it. Um, let's see if I have anything else on my list here. No. Um, I think that's it. So thank you guys for everything. If you want to call in and be a part of a future show, give me a call. 570-290-8151 is the number. It's it's voicemail, round the clock, the hotline, the surf report hotline, 570-290-8151. Also, if you want two episodes a week instead of a measly one, you can do that too. We get it all set up for you over at Patreon. That's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Jeff K. Sign up for a $4 or more monthly donation, and you'll get an extra bonus episode every week. What do you think about that? That's a hell of a deal. So do it today. Patreon.com slash Jeff K. And the WVSR.com, that's the the West Virginia Surf Report. That's where the home of the, of the podcast is now, as well as a bunch of other nonsense that I post. So check it out. Again, the WVSR.com is the home, the hub of the entire Surf Report universe. So check it out. And I just worked on the design of it. So if, you want, if you're interested in that, head on over and take a look. And I'm starting to get... Oh, my God. Hang on a second. <coughs> oh, my God. I can't talk. <coughs> oh, my God. I just hit the pause button and had a, like a coughing jag. My eyes are... <laughs> My eyes are watering. I don't know what's going on with me. Let's call it a day. Until next time, which will be over on the Patreon side, you guys have yourselves a fine, fine day. I'll see you. Bye. <laughs>